it's just beyond comical, it's beyond insane, it's beyond ridiculous. The internet is full of lies and misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine that are putting people off from taking the vaccine. And as a doctor, I feel it's my responsibility to educate as many people as I can. Like honestly, the myths, the rumors about this COVID-19 vaccine that being spread is getting ridiculous. And in this video, I'm gonna do my best to debunk a few of those myths. So I'm gonna get my stethoscope to add to my credibility because a lot of people are having trust issues nowadays. And we're gonna get this video started. Hey guys, I'm Sridip, a junior doctor in the UK, and I usually post videos on weekends, I don't usually do like midweek videos, but I just had to because the rumours I was reading about the COVID-19 vaccine, it was it was just getting too much. The rumours, the myths, the lies, whatever you want to call it. So why should you listen to me? You're probably thinking like, who is this random guy? Well, I'm a junior doctor in the UK and I think that makes me a reasonably credible source of information, at least in my opinion. At least I think it's more credible than the people who are, you know, putting out all these rumours on the internet. One thing I do want to say before we start is that it's important to question things, especially like a vaccine or a medication, something you're taking into your body. It's important to ask questions and it's important to be curious, but there's a clear difference between questioning something scientifically versus making up blatant lies or rumours when there's concrete evidence because it could harm people's health. And in this case, the vaccine has been proven to be safe and effective and these rumours, these lies are hurting the population. But without any further ado, let's Let's get this video started and I'm going to start with my first myth. Also, I just wanted to say I'm going to put all of my references in the description box down below because if I just put them sort of all over the screen, you won't really get a chance to read into them if you if you want to. So myth number one, a nurse died on camera after getting the COVID vaccine. So this is the most ridiculous myth ever because the nurse didn't die after getting the COVID vaccine. She was alive and well. So basically what happened was a nurse in America took the vaccine live on camera and then she collapsed. And a lot of people, a lot of conspiracy theorists assumed that she died because of taking the vaccine. So what actually happened was she fainted. She had a vasovagal attack, which is when people faint, when they have intense emotions or pain or heat or lots of people have different triggers. But the bottom line is she didn't die. She just fainted. And she actually said in an interview after this event, notice I'm saying after because she didn't die. She said that, you know, it's common for her and it happens all the time since her childhood. And she literally said in the interview after the event, I feel fine now. Also, apparently loads of people, you know, believe this myth because she didn't post on social media quite a few days after the event and not everyone posts on social media every day. It's something that people have to remember. And then to top this off, she posted pictures, you know, working with her colleagues. She even gave like a live interview where she was present. And then people had the audacity to say that this is an imposter and it's not actually the woman who died live on camera. I honestly don't know how else to debunk this myth other than saying, she didn't die because she was alive and well after having the vaccine. Like, what more do you want? So this myth is 100% categorically, fully, finally, absolutely debunked. And I actually find it ridiculous that people are choosing to believe this one case, which is wrong, but they're not looking at, you know, the news and seeing all the people suffering in ITU, all the people dying in hospitals. They're choosing not to believe that. They're saying, oh, the hospitals are empty. This is all fake. But they're choosing to believe that, you know, this one nurse died when she just fainted. It's just... It's just beyond comical, it's beyond insane, it's beyond ridiculous, and it's beyond frustrating. Right, rant over. No, it's not rant over, this video has just started, like, I've got a lot to rant about. So let's move on to myth number two. Myth number two, the COVID vaccine is a conspiracy for implanting trackable microchips into the general population. I'm just gonna start off by saying there is no vaccine microchip to track the general population. It's just not true. Like most of us nowadays, we have smartphones. So technically we're already being tracked anyway, because we all have, you know, Google Maps on or location services. So the government don't need a second way to track us. This myth has been all over social media, all over TikTok about people saying, you know, about these trackable microchips. And this actually came from a quote from Bill Gates that there would be a personal record of people who have had the vaccine. But firstly, this wasn't in the method of microchips. And secondly, it hasn't been implemented in any way. So people saying that, you know, the vaccines that are currently being rolled out have microchips. It's just, it's just nonsense. There is no evidence that the vaccine contains microchips. What there is evidence about is that this vaccine is effective, it saves lives and it reduces hospitalization. So, I mean, until you give me evidence that, you know, I've been implanted with the microchip after having the vaccine, I'm not gonna believe it. I'm gonna believe in the science, in the evidence that is already out there. 
And honestly, if they were to track me, like, they wouldn't really find much. It would be a waste of time and money. Like, I just wake up, go to work, you know, maybe go to the shops nowadays. Like, so why? Why would you track me? Like, there's nothing to track. I mean, these conspiracy theorists, they have a far-fetched, they have a good imagination. I'll give them that. You know, they should be, like, creative writers. But, like, no, not when people's health and lives are at stake. You cannot do this. So myth number three, the COVID-19 vaccine will alter my DNA. So the COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine, which is what most people are worried about, contains mRNA, which is not the same as DNA. So I'm gonna explain it in very basic terms so everyone understands. So we have, in our bodies, we have cells. These have nuclei which contain our DNA or contain our genetic material. And we also have cytoplasm which surrounds the nucleus. So DNA is protected within the nucleus very tightly and this is converted into RNA which is allowed to leave the nucleus and be translated into proteins which then can leave the cell and code for a variety of things. Messenger RNA triggers the production of specific proteins in this case which allows the immune response to be mounted against severe COVID-19 infection. So messenger RNA is not the same as DNA. These are two different things and messenger RNA does not re-enter the nucleus and get converted back into DNA or alter our DNA. There are some other types of RNAs that sometimes re-enter the nucleus for a variety of functions, but messenger RNA does not do this, and messenger RNA is broken down really quickly after it's being used. But in this case, there's enough time to allow the specific proteins to fight COVID-19 to be made. It's actually really clever, so let's just let's just give some praise to science for creating this, you know, amazing vaccine, this amazing technique, instead of always trying to find flaws and trying to, you know, make myths about, oh, this vaccine can damage our DNA or, oh, it's gonna change our genetic code. So it is not plausible that the mRNA vaccine will alter our DNA. It just goes against all the things we know about, you know, how cells work, cell biology, the basics. So it's not plausible, don't worry, it won't alter your DNA. So myth number four is that the vaccine was produced way too quickly to be properly tested for safety. So this pandemic is a global emergency and scientific collaboration on a global scale allowed this vaccine to be made quickly and to be made sure that it's effective. I mean, if we didn't have a vaccine, people would say, oh, they couldn't make a vaccine. But now that we have a vaccine, people were saying that, you know, it's been made way too quickly to actually know that it's safe. I mean, there's two sides to the story and people will always complain. The vaccine has gone through years and years of hard work in a matter of months and this is only possible because of the hard work that has happened around the world. And it has gone through safety trials. There are people who believe that it hasn't gone through any trials. It has. I mean, all vaccines, all medications need to go through this rigorous testing for safety, for effectiveness before they're put to use. And it's not like this, you know, vaccine was just put on the shelves as quickly as possible. It's not skipped the safety trials. It's gone through all of these trials. It's just, it's happened quickly because it is a global emergency and it needed to happen quickly. And I think it's credit to, you know, all the scientists, everyone in the world who's made this possible. And yes, I agree, it's hard to look at, you know, the long-term safety or the long-term side effects, but that's with any medication you won't know until years and years have passed. And the safety trials that have taken place have shown that it's an effective and safe way to fight severe COVID-19 infections. Let's just be proud of what the world together has achieved in the last few months to make this, you know, vaccine to help people instead of, you know, finding flaws or just thinking it's not being tested properly. I mean, as I said, there's always, you know, two sides and people will always complain no matter what. You can't, you just can't please everyone. I say this time and time again, it's important to question things, you know, that you're allowing to be put into your body. It's really important. But when there's scientific evidence out there, when this vaccine has gone through rigorous trials, trials that have shown that it's safe and effective, I think it's just, you know, an insult to science saying that it's not gone through the safety procedures and protocols that are needed. So that's it guys, I hope this video was useful. As I said, I just went over some of the myths about the COVID-19 vaccine that people really need to be educated about. And all this misinformation about the vaccine is spreading across social media, across the world like a wildfire. The bottom line is, no one is forcing you to take the vaccine, but there are two sides. One side is science, with scientists and actual evidence, and the other side, rumors, myths and lies from, I don't know who, some conspiracy theorists, some, you know, I don't, I don't know honestly who makes these things up. If you choose to believe in the rumors and lies, I, I have nothing to say. No, that's wrong, I have a lot to say. If that's you, I strongly urge you to consider the differences between scientific evidence and some memes or some, you know, jokes or some rumors and lies that are being spread by who knows who. 
if you guys want, I can make a part two if this is something you're interested, or I can react to like COVID vaccine memes or something like that. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying till the end. I'll be back with my usual, you know, doctor videos, doctor vlogs, but I just thought I needed to make this video. I really did. So yeah, I want you guys to, you know, take care, stay safe, you know, educate yourself and others as much as you can about the vaccine. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. But thank you so much and see you guys later.